In today's world, nothing short of a miracle will help us. Stand by and watch the miracle hour broadcast. there tonight. Good night again to everyone. Those of you who are out there in television land and wherever you may be right now, uh, we would like for you to call a friend and, and have them tune into this program. We have been focusing this month on the, the area of young people and the tremendous call that we've been getting. And uh, we know that you're out there and some of you are not at home and uh, disagreement, misunderstanding, and breaking the family unit down. But we wanted to know there is hope. And last week we talked about the different societies that are out there to help our youths. And today it is with no exception that we have one of the best person that you want to talk to about how you might be able to find a decent place if it so happened that you don't have anywhere to stay. We'll come back in a little while to introduce my co-host and my guests. But until then, listen to this song that should be of hope and inspiration to you. We feature this song this month, When You're in Trouble, God is Standing By. And so, enjoy the song. When you have troubles, don't cry Just remember God is standing by Thank you Lord When you have heartaches Don't cry No, no, no Don't worry, don't be discouraged Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't cry. It's not time when a bird gets you down. I want to sing and say, God will be standing by. That's what it told me. Yeah. So don't you worry. Don't cry. Thank you, Lord. much and now let me go on to introduce my co-host which as you know is Minister Higgins who has been with us over the past weeks and uh, next to her is our guest today uh, who is um, Wendy Horton and I'm sure that you're not the owner of the Tim Horton but I wish. somehow I have a strong know. feeling I'll run some investigation oh, welcome okay. to the miracle hour Thank you. And uh, let me start off with, with, with you, Wendy. Tell us, tell us something about your, your organization and how you function, because most people out there or have a stigma as to shelter. When you hear about shelter, you, you get a feeling that, wow, my child is finished. But sometimes there is hope, and instead of being on the street, these are places that can offer great incentive. Tell us about your organization. Well, first of all, there's always hope, Reverend. And uh, we're there to, uh, to help young folks along in any way we can. I'm the executive director of Youth Without Shelter. We're a 50-bed shelter in North Etobicoke, uh, housing youth between the ages of 16 to 24. Mm -hmm. And we have several programs, all designed to meet youth exactly where they're at when they come to us. Um, some are ready to move out on their own to find employment. They just need a little bit of help in doing that. 
others are really striving to complete their education. So we have a special transitional program for them where they can stay longer term mm -hmm. and have help with tutoring and computer lab and so forth to complete their education. Others, unfortunately, are struggling from substance dependencies, and uh, we try and refer them to resources that can help them with that as well. Wonderful. The reason why I'm so glad that you took time out to be on this program tonight it is the fact that uh, parents sometimes just doesn't have the answers, and having struggling to make hands meet, sometimes they overwork, and the children are left and become unruly and ending up in the wrong hands sometimes in drug pushers and pr prostitution ring and all like that. So you're saying that the homes are there, that if a, a young person get carried away one way or another, it's no harm calling and, and get refuge. Mm -hmm. and, and I would also say too that uh, probably over 90% of the youth that come through our doors have a background, the family breakup of one way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. Also, many of them have not just become unruly, but uh, fortunately the majority of them have suffered abuse in the home. Mm -hmm. And they're actually escaping mm -hmm. abuse. And it does not necessarily mean that all of these youth are from the lesser side of society. So no, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, from all ec economic levels, from from all cultures, all races, uh, the, it's very diverse, very diverse. And it's uh, a universal problem. Income has nothing to do with it, unfortunately. I know that Anne has some questions as well in mind that you probably would like to ask and to get some more information out there to the public. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about, you know, the society that we live in today? and? Uh, the shelters and provision that is made by government, sometimes we look at it from a negative hand. How do you see it as well? Well, I mean, it's a resource that's there for, for our young people mm -hmm. because they're really ours. Um, they're not just belonging to their biological parents, but they're ours. And the reason our young people are ours is because God has placed us in certain areas of the community to look over our young people. And so we're going around in society blaming a lot of young people, calling them names, stereotyping them, talking down at them, and not realizing that what you're actually doing is sowing a seed into your biological children's future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we love other people's young people and other people's children, God smile at it and he bless our children in return. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I look at the cycle that's been happening in our society, especially in the ethnic communities, and I will speak about that clearly because that's where I've spent most of my life and that's where I've had most of my experiences. Right. And when I look at our ethnic communities, I see people that are selfish. I see people that are loving their children and half loving their children, a matter of fact, because love takes a lot of sacrifice. So whether your child is rebellious, rude, um, not behaving, not doing well in school, you have to make the sacrifice out of love to stand by them regardless regardless and see them through whatever seasons they're going through because we've all been there right. I've been there wonderful Wendy what are some of the reasons you encountered with a lot of different reason why these children are sometimes not able staying at home what are some of the main reason that that you come across unfortunately sometimes they're just not wanted at home and speaking to, to what you just stated, sometimes they're not wanted at home, sometimes they're getting in the way, even though they're not unruly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're, they're abused physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, emotionally abused in one way, shape, or form. Sometimes they are unruly. Sometimes, unfortunately, they are experiencing undiagnosed mental illness problems, and it's beyond what the parent can cope with. Mm -hmm. Um, so they just throw up their hands in despair and the child is left to fend on its own, so, or his or her own. So it's um, really a myriad of reasons. Mm -hmm. But one thing that's almost universally certain is that there is some kind of family breakdown going on or has gone on in recent years. But do you have like a follow-up program? Uh, when a, child, a young person might call your organization mm -hmm. or they might be turned over to your organization 
by the penal system. I don't know how you get the young people. We might have to get into that in a little while. Is there a follow-up program with the parent to find our guardian to find out what is the real reason why this child do not want to stay at home or you just receive those kids? How, how, do, you deal, how do you approach it? It depends on the individual uh, situation. Sometimes mm -hmm. we will work when it is safe for the child. We will work to family reconciliation. Other times it's not safe for the child to be with the family at all. Uh, mm -hmm. We have children brought to us by the police. Uh, we have some that come out of the penal system that have no connection with family. We have others that have been brought to us by Children's Aid and perhaps were brought up in foster homes and really have no family around to uh, reconcile with. Um, so those youth uh, really need to learn how to be independent and, and to live successfully in society mm -hmm. on their own. And I think that's the saddest story. You know, so many of the youth in our building, 50 at a time, um, even those with family are very alone, mm -hmm. and, um, and that's probably the saddest part when you're six, 16 or 17 years old, to be out on your own trying to struggle and make it. And that's where we're really trying to help each youth through teaching life skills, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. budgeting, cooking, uh, communication skills, um, how to live on their own, how to speak to a landlord, how to go in a job interview, how to write a resume. Um, the gamut, the whole gamut. It's, so it's, it's just very not, long. It's just not shelter, but there's a no, no. comprehensive program mm -hmm. that is laid out as well to help these youth. That's correct. We, we, we take each youth where they are, we assess where they're at, and we try and move them forward from there. Um, if they have a substance dependency, then we'll work on that. Uh, if they get beyond that, then we're working on how to find a job. And we'll get the job, we work on how to find housing and how to live independently and successfully. And as I mentioned earlier, there's some that are focused on completing their education with those there in a separate part of the building in our transitional housing program called Stay in School. And we're supporting them to continue their education. And I'm thrilled we had five youth graduate from high school. Good. Just, mm -hmm. uh, but if I was 16 or 17 years old and I walk up to your door and knock and said, I don't have anywhere to stay, where do you go from there with me? Well, the first thing we do is do a little interview with you. We ask you to call in. And then we do a little bit interview to find out more about why you're homeless, what your needs are, um, where you've been staying, whether you have family, and so on and so forth. So we have a little bit of information mm -hmm. prior to your arrival to our facility. Once you come into the facility, you're assigned a case manager. And you sit with the case manager, and they'll go more in depth into your personal situation, where you are, how they can help you. And the case manager will make a goal with each youth um, for where they'd like to be. They help the youth in making their own goals, and we're not dictating to the youth where they want to be or what they want to do. They're rather assisted in making the goals. And then each week they'll meet with the case manager to put some steps towards how they're going to reach their goals, whether it's uh, looking for a job or attending particular educational sessions, whatever it may be. And then in a week, we'll check in with them again, see where they're at. Well, to my viewing audience tonight, I do hope that you're receiving, you, you're receiving some form of education where the shelter, youth shelter is concerned. Most people, including myself, uh, we heard from time to time as to shelters where abuse do take place as well, but not always. And I think instead of a child being running up on, and, and down on the street not knowing where to go, it is a good thing if you can call one of these places. In a little while, uh, Wendy will tell you where they are situated and how you might be able to reach a good shelter so that we don't always have to lose our children to violent crimes and drugs and guns. And there are vast amount of opportunities and privileges around the city that you can be a part of. It's taxpayers' money. Why not enjoy it? Why not be a part of it? And, and, and sometimes, when you leave the, I believe that when you leave the, 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 the shelter, there's also a good opportunity for you to be reunited with your family. And uh, they're just there as a temporary uh, solution. And uh, the number that is passing on the screen right now, do not hesitate to call. If you run away from home, if you're on the street, not knowing what to do, where to go, 
call the number you're watching right now. And for those parents that are out there, I know your hearts are broken from time to time and uh, not knowing what to do. There is hope. Call the number. It's not always turning on your children on the street. You, you know, sometimes you have to seek help for yourself as well because we go through a lot of things as parents. Please call the number tonight. In a little while, we'll bring you up to date as to how you can get reading materials to help you to find your way back into society. Uh, Minister Higgins, uh, I know you always have so much to offer. Question to ask, uh, what's going through on your mind? You, you have a, a youngster as well, mm -hmm. and uh, how are you coping with him? Um, my son is well adjusted. Mm -hmm. um, he's an awesome young man. Right. He's a peer minister in his school. Good. He's only 17 years old, mm -hmm. but he's a leader. Wow. And, um, you know, I thank God for the experiences that I've had. Mm -hmm. I also thank God for the mistakes and the errors that have occurred in my life, whether by my own doing mm -hmm. or, you know, by just a disadvantaged position. Right. Because that has made me wiser. Mm -hmm. And it has made me stronger as well. And it has helped me to raise my son in a phenomenal way and to make sacrifices for him that maybe if I didn't have the experiences that I've had, I would not have understood it that way and been able to, to do it. My son and I are best friends, mm -hmm. basically. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's but many wonderful. times people fail to understand the struggle we go through. It's only to make us stronger. Yes. And as we pass on that experience to other people, it also helps them to overcome right. their struggles as well. Right. You mentioned briefly that at some point, whether it was your doings or not, mm -hmm. you have run into similar situation. Do you care to tell us how you got out of it? Well, I don't believe, yes, I, I don't have a problem. The right. Word of God says we overcome by the blood and the power of our testimony. Right. And this is one of the reasons I'm here. This is one of the reasons I'm probably sitting in this chair right now. Good. Because the Lord said he, he ordered our steps. And therefore, if he's been ordering my steps, it simply means he would have ordered me to be here mm -hmm. to talk about this issue. And this is an issue that is very dear to my heart. And the reason being is that I've been in the situation like many of the young people in Youth Without Shelter. But nobody knows this because I've never really shared, you know, the details of my life with many people because mm -hmm. they will look at you and think, well, you? And sometimes they won't even believe it if right. I tell them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there comes a time, though, when you have to share these things right. so others can learn from it. I mean... God has taken me through so much. He has placed some angels in my life. And even today, there are angels in my life. And I want people out there to understand that look around you. There are angels. They are in the form of human, but they're angels. Mm -hmm. And they're there to guide you, to help you. I'm, I'm t I want to tell my young people, look for the angels around you and use them as your strength and your resource and to help. get to where you need to go. We can make it. I have made it. I am not in a less position than I was. Look at me today. And I was one of the foundation person and clients in Youth Without Shelter. And I worked there part time while I was going to school and I was living there. They gave me a job in the office part-time. So from that stage, mm -hmm. people could see greatness mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. And I could see greatness in myself as well. And so our young people have to understand that greatness is calling their name. Right. Only if they will just listen and take heed to the greatness that's called. Wonderful. Uh, but one day, there are some wonderful young people out there. Absolutely. It is almost impossible to imagine how we how quickly and how fast we are losing practically a generation mm -hmm. but if you have a word of encouragement to those youngsters even before they get to the stage that you have to care for them what would you say to them tonight i'd say it's all about self-esteem remember how valuable you are um, to people who love you in the eyes of god it's about greatness as Reverend Higgins just said, uh, we all have the capacity to be great. Unfortunately, some of us have to overcome more struggles than others, perhaps.
but there's always hope, there's always greatness, there's always people that you can reach out to, there's always people that care, whether it's in your community, whether it's in your church, whether it's in your immediate or extended family or friends. Uh, always reach out for help, always have faith in yourself and have self-esteem. I think that's that's the thing that hurts me the most about the young people we see in the shelter. Their, their self-esteem has been very battered mm -hmm. and bruised. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we work very hard to bring that back for them. We do in every way we can. We try to de-institutionalize mm -hmm. our building using bright colors and, mm -hmm. and, and ensuring everyone was, is treated with the appropriate amount of respect in every way, shape, and form, uh, in that they treat each other with respect, um, because every life is very valuable very and nice. very important. And the potential, uh, sitting right next to me, potential of every resident that we have. Right. Yeah. Reverend Higgins is an example of that. Good. Well, I know that your center, uh, your shelter rather, uh, would not be able to facilitate all the needs that are out there. But do you care to tell us exactly where you are? Uh, yes, we are in uh, North Etobicoke, mm -hmm. and we do house youth from all over the city. Right. Uh, it's not specifically that community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can be reached by calling 416-748-0110. Mm -hmm. And uh, any youth can call there at any time if they're in need of our services. If for some reason we're full, we'll definitely make sure that we can refer you to another youth shelter that's available within the city. That's wonderful. How did you get involved with you, with our shelter? Uh, I got involved in, in rather a strange way. <laughs> uh, my background was not really working uh, with youth homelessness. I came up here from, I'm Canadian, but I moved back here from the United States with, after a long career with the American Red Cross where we did a lot of emergency disaster relief sheltering, mm -hmm. uh, but not necessarily homeless. And I was looking for employment in this uh, area within the nonprofit profit sector and saw an ad for Youth Without Shelter and thought that would be a very uh, satisfying, worthwhile mm -hmm. organization to be part of. So I, I pursued it, got more information, and I was correct in my assumption. It is a very worthwhile, satisfying organization mm -hmm. to be involved in, and I enjoy it very much. How long have you been with that? Five years. Wonderful. And every day is different. You know two days, it's like if you have teenagers at home, I live with 50 of them for wow. about 40, 50 hours a week, so yeah. you can see what it's like. So it's fun and it's heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, wow. It's not unusual to shed a tear, yeah. um, but it's not unusual to be laughing hysterically either. So it, it's not your typical job. I know. Um, a lot of people think that like Youth Without Shelter, or a lot of shelters are slums. You know, that's because even a lot of our pastors, they don't visit these places to see where the young people are being, they've been living. And so they have this perception that youth shelters, all youth shelters are slums. But Youth Without Shelter is actually one of the really, really nice ones compared to to others. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we work very hard at deinstitutionalizing. So, fresh paint on the walls, and we were always painting the walls. <laughs> we fortunately have a lot of corporate groups and church groups who come in and paint walls. We have a lot of uh, church groups that come in and do home cooked meals for us. Uh, we work uh, very hard at putting patterns on the walls. We have a, a program going now called Roommates, where individuals will donate to support a room and then come in and paint it. and bright colors and patterns and put new linens, bright matching linens on the bed and comforters on the bed. So we, I mean, we are an institution. We can't, we can't get around that. We're housing mm -hmm. 50 youth. We're staffed 24-7. We, we can't get away from that fact. But we do everything we possibly can to make it more homey for folks. Yeah. Good. What are the protections that are there for the young people? Because sometimes, how does it work, you know? Is there any, I mean, are they exposed to any further endangerment or? Actually, it's a very, very safe environment for the youth. Uh, the door, we have a double locked door system for people to enter. So if, uh, for example, there was any serious abuse by 
a family friend parent and they found out where the youth was residing they wouldn't be able to access the building mm -hmm. to get to the youth mm -hmm. we have to know who the individual is or what their business is before they're allowed in confidentiality is protected fiercely mm -hmm. fiercely mm -hmm. protected okay. um, there's always trained staff in the building and available um, if there's any problems whatsoever to assist the youth yeah. well that's that's pretty good because I know that there's some ins institution where you know the protection is not there and uh, you still have substance abuse around and uh, those who are watching tonight my heart goes out I have raised seven children I didn't tell you that oh. <laughs> and to raise seven children in this city you know and still having easy. them receive a good education and have their head screwed on quite well and uh, my baby daughter next month July she'll be 33 years old and she walked up to me a couple of weeks ago with her fiance and said dad we're gonna get married and I, I shed tears <laughs> because I thought I was losing my daughter but the young man was so decent yes. you know he traveled all the way from the United States and he said Reverend Spencer I could not I would not have married your daughter without your blessing and you don't find these things too much but we need to be there for our children, however old or young they may be. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it must be a great feeling, you know, having these children around you from different backgrounds and are uh, able to reach out to them. Yes. It's not just merely a job or the money, but that, you know, at the end of the day, you look back and even one of those children have made it to the top. It's, it's worthwhile. It's wonderful. And mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to share a story with you. We have so many of our youth that come back and see us years later, years mm -hmm. later, two, three, four years later, maybe more, um, because we've become family to them. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, some of them just don't have any family to reach mm -hmm. out to or reconcile with, and we become their family. So they'll come back and visit us. They'll bring their children for us to see, or they'll bring pictures. And uh, not too long ago, a gentleman uh, came to our door and asked for me, and I went up to the front to meet him. And he was an older gentleman. He was in his 40s. And I thought, well, the unusual. Mm -hmm. um, so he started telling me how he was a former resident. You might know wow. him. <laughs> uh, and he's now living out in Nova Scotia, a successful business owner. And he happened to be visiting um, some folks in Toronto with his family. He had been found under a bridge by the police. Mm -hmm. And they brought him to us. And he resided this for, with us for a while. And he actually had brought his children back to see That's to great. explain the lesson of how he started That's and where lovely. he came out. And uh, it was just, uh, it was wonderful, wonderful hearing his story and, and knowing that we made that difference in his yes. life, mm -hmm. even it's though I wasn't there at the time. Beautiful, beautiful story, and I'm sure you have similar stories from time to time. Uh, those of you are watching tonight, here is how you can get some books to, to help you along. And, uh, and maybe you want to attend a church some of these days, and uh, the church of thy pastor, here is how you can find us. For partnering with us, you will receive this giant print reference Bible, as well as these devotional study books, just to say thank you for your support. For more information, call 416-747-6442. Give Hello, friends. Good night, and wherever you are, uh, we want to... Thank you for watching a television program that is called the Miracle Hour Broadcast. I'm the host, Dr. Spencer, and I do hope that you will continue to watch every Saturday night at 11 p.m. I'll also like to take this opportunity of inviting you to our worship center at 1700 Keel Street in Toronto, just a little south of Eglinton Avenue. See you there. Miracle Hour presents Gospel Praise. We are seeking musicians, vocalists, praise dancers, and performers. Get ready to get your praise on. A dynamic new presence on the Canadian gospel scene. Uplifting and inspirational entertainment. Starting Saturday, June 27, 2009, from 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. To be part of the studio audience, contact 416-747-6442. Admission is free and by reservation. Bring your energy energy and your enthusiasm. These are information that is important and vital to each and every one of you who are watching tonight. Mom, Dad, if you're out there and your hearts are broken 
because you just cannot get along with your children. There is hope. There are people that you can talk with. Mm -hmm. Children, you don't have to end up into a drug ring or a prostitution ring. There is hope. There is a vast amount of information that you can receive. Just call the number that you're watching right now. And uh, I do hope that you will do that tonight and pass on this information to some friends. May God bless you. And until next week, at the same time, same station, this is Dr. Spencer saying good night. God bless you. Bye-bye.